Credit Risk in Rayrock, an example for measuring profitability for a commercial bank portfolio of credit assets. Calculating losses for a loan portfolio. The model proposed here takes on the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision, Basel II, approach called the Internal Ratings-Based IRB approach. By this method, institutions will be allowed to use their own internal measures for key drivers of credit risk as primary inputs to the capital calculation, subject to meeting certain conditions and to explicit supervisory approval. All institutions using the IRB approach are allowed to determine the borrower's probability of default, while those using the advanced IRB approach are permitted to rely on own estimates of loss given default and exposure at default of an exposure by exposure basis. In the credit business, losses of interest and principal occur all the time. There are always some borrowers that default on their obligations. The losses that are actually experienced in a particular year vary from year to year, depending on the number and severity of default events. Figure one illustrates how variation in realized losses over time leads to a distribution of losses for a bank. While it is impossible to know in advance the losses a bank will suffer in any given year, an institution can forecast the average level of credit losses it can reasonably expect to experience. These losses are referred to as expected losses and are shown in figure one by the dashed line. One of the functions of bank capital is to provide a buffer to protect a bank's debt holders against peak losses that exceed expected levels. Such peaks are illustrated by the spikes above the line in figure one. Peak losses do not occur every year, but when they occur, they can potentially be very large. Losses above expected levels are usually referred to as unexpected losses. Banking institutions know they will occur now and then, but they cannot know in advance their timing and severity. Thus, capital is needed to cover the risks of such peak losses, and therefore it has a loss-absorbing function. The worst case one could imagine would be that banks lose their entire credit portfolio in a given year. This event, though, is highly unlikely, and holding capital against it would be economically inefficient. Banks have an incentive to minimize the capital they hold, because reducing capital frees up economic resources that can be directed to profitable investments. On the other hand, the less capital a bank holds, the greater is the likelihood that it will not be able to beat its own debt obligations. That is, the losses in a given year will not be covered by profit plus available capital and that the bank will become insolvent. Thus, banks and their supervisors must carefully balance the risks and rewards of holding capital. There are a number of approaches to determining how much capital a bank should hold. The IRB approach adopted for Basel II focuses on the frequency of bank insolvencies arising from credit losses that supervisors are willing to accept. By means of a stochastic credit portfolio model, it is possible to estimate the amount of loss which will be exceeded with a small predefined probability. This probability can be considered the probability of bank insolvency. Capital is set to ensure that unexpected losses will exceed this level of capital with only this very low fixed probability. This approach to setting capital is illustrated in figure two. The curve in figure two describes the likelihood of losses of a certain magnitude. The area under the entire curve is equal to 100%. That is, this is the graph of probability density. The curve shows that small losses around or slightly below the expected loss occur more frequently than large losses. The likelihood that losses will exceed the sum of expected losses and unexpected losses, that is the likelihood that a bank will not be able to meet its own credit obligations by its profits and capital, equals the hatched area on the, the right-hand side of the curve. 100% minus this likelihood is called the confidence level and the corresponding threshold is called value at risk, VAR, at the confidence level. If capital is set according to the gap between EL, expected losses, and value at risk, and if EL is covered by provisions or revenues, then the likelihood that the bank will remain solvent over a one-year horizon is equal to the confidence level. Under Basel II, 
capital is said to maintain a supervisory fixed confidence level. So far, the expected loss has been regarded from a top-down perspective, that is from a portfolio view. It can also be viewed bottom-up, namely from its components. The expected loss of a portfolio is assumed to equal the proportion of obligers that might default within a given time frame, one year in the Basel context, multiplied by the outstanding exposure at default, and once more, multiplied by the loss given default rate, that is, the percentage of exposure that will not be covered by sale of collateral. Of course, banks will not know in advance the exact number of defaults in any given year, nor the exact amount outstanding, nor the actual loss rate. These factors are random variables, but banks can estimate average or expected figures. As such, the three factors mentioned above correspond to the risk parameters upon which Basel II IRB approach is built. Probability of default, PD, per rating grade, which gives the average percentage of obligers that default in this rating grade in the course of one year. Exposure at default, EAD, which gives an estimate of the amount outstanding, drawn amounts plus likely future drawdowns of yet undrawn lines in case the borrower defaults. Loss given default, LGD, which gives the percentage of exposure the bank might lose in case the borrower defaults. These losses are usually shown as a percentage of EAD and depend, among others, on the type and amount of collateral as well as the type of borrower and the expected proceeds from the workout of the assets. The expected loss in currency amounts can then be written as EL equals PD, times EAD times LGD. The major limitation of this function is that it can only determine expected or mean losses for a certain credit portfolio. Without knowing the exact shape of its density curve, it is impossible to get to know the unexpected loss at a certain confidence level, thus its value at risk. That is why we propose here a methodology to construct a bottom-up model on which such a curve can be defined based on the individual behavior of each asset belonging to the portfolio. Based on the individual particularities of PDs, EADs, and LGDs of each loan, we can build a simulated model and create such a curve. It will be possible to determine the magnitude of expected and unexpected losses for a bank portfolio.